this video we're going to talk about the pH scale. Uh, please remember when you're writing pH, it's a small p and a capital H. Uh, pH, you will be given the formula in your data book as pH equals minus log, it's to the base 10, we only use base 10 in chemistry, of the hydrogen ion concentration. So if you know the hydrogen ion concentration, you simply pop it into the calculator and then take the negative log and you've got your pH. So if I wanted to do the pH of, say, hydrochloric acid, HCl, the first thing I would need to do is write the equation for its dissociation. Why do you need that? Because effectively you need to know, is this producing 1H plus or 2H plus? Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. That means you get two of those. So in this case here, let's say that concentration is 0.1 moles per litre. Then because of the one-to-one -one ratio, this will be 0.1 mole per litre and that will as well. Although we're not interested in the chlorine, we're only interested in the hydrogen. So if this was 0.1 and that was sulfuric, that would be 0.2. So be careful, the number of protons that the acid gives up will obviously be important in working out the H plus concentration. So if I want the pH of this now, I would go pH equals minus log to the base 10 of 0.1, and that would give me a value of 1. Easy. So strong acids are easy. But please don't go straight from that to that. Write the equation first. Check that it's a 1 to 1. If it's not, then remember you need to change that according to however many H pluses have been produced. Okay? Now, that's all very well for a strong acid. However, if we wanted to do a weak acid, unfortunately, it's not so easy. So let's take now the reaction where CH3COOH becomes CH3, COO minus, and H plus. Again, let's start with a 0.1 molar solution. Whereas in HCl's case, that was a single arrow, and therefore whatever the concentration is there, that would be the same there. This time, we know that it's not going to dissociate fully. In fact, it only dissociates to a tiny extent. In order to calculate the H+, plus, we need to be given some extra data. And that data we need is the Ka value, this is just a Kc for an acid, for this particular equilibrium. So I write my Kc expression, usual way. And now I substitute in some concentrations. Well, I haven't got any concentrations to substitute, so I'm going to have to make some up. Let's say, for argument's sake, from that original concentration, X is the extent of dissociation. One of these gives one of those and one of those, so that means I get X there, and I get X there as well. So in this expression now, I'm going to have X times X over 0.1 minus X, which is X squared over 0.1 minus x. Now the Ka value has to be given to you. You can't do it otherwise, and I've used this so many times I can remember it. It's 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So I've got 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x squared over 0.1 minus x. Now um, hopefully your maths will tell you that when you bring this over and multiply by that, you will get a number term, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0.1, minus an x term, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5x, equals x squared. And if you then put all of them on one side, equaling it to 0, you've got a quadratic equation. Now, the syllabus does not require you to work with quadratic equations. In maths, you probably use the, what was it, minus b plus or minus... Uh, square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. I, I did that so many times when I was in school, I still remember it. You don't need it in chemistry. 
Instead, we're going to make an approximation. Since this is a weak acid, we know that x will be small. So what we're going to do now is say, since acid is weak, x is very small, and 0.1 minus x approximates to 0.1. So what we're now going to get is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x squared over 0.1. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 equals x squared over 0.1. But don't just go to that without telling the, the examiner why you've done it. Now, hopefully, the rest is just easy maths. Bring the 0.1 over, that will give you 1.7 times 10 to the minus 6. Take the square root of it to get x, and then finally negative log it, and you've got your pH. What we're going to do in this one is look at working out the pH of a base. The classic example, as we've said before, is sodium hydroxide. It's a strong base, and it dissociates completely into its ions according to this equation. If you're given the concentration, 0.1 always seems to be the one that they work with. If that's 0.1, then that's 0.1, and that's 0.1. This time, we're not interested in the sodium ion, we're only interested in the hydroxide ion. Again, like we said with the uh, acids one, if this was um, barium hydroxide, that would be BaOH2. That would put a 2 there, and 0.1 would become 0.2. Just be careful, stoichiometry, it's, it's really easy, but also easy to make mistakes. Be careful. Okay, so again, um, if I wanted to work out the pH here, I would need, obviously, the negative log of the H plus concentration. But I don't have an H plus concentration. I have a hydroxide ion concentration. The data book will also give you this formula, pOH, which is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And a lot of people know that there's a relationship between pH and pOH, where together they add up to be 14. So if you now worked out the pOH by taking the negative log of 0.1, that would give you a pOH of 1, and therefore the pH would be 14, take away 1, which would be 13, which is what you'd expect for a strong base like sodium hydroxide. If you weren't aware of that, and I'm not sure whether QCA will accept you just quoting that, they should, they probably will. However, there is another way of converting an OH- into an H+. In the data book, they give you the fact that um, the ionic product of water, Kw, is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration in water times the hydroxide ion concentration in water. That's given to you on page one of the data book. On page two of the data book are some constants. And the constant, Kw, is given to you as one times 10 to the minus 14. So if you use the data book information, the formula is given to you, then the value of the Kw is given to you. What we would now do is use this relationship, H plus, times 0.1 equals 10 to the minus 14. H plus would then be 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0.1, which is 10 to the minus 13. And the negative log of 10 to the minus 13 is 13. So it's up to you which, whichever way you do it. If I had to recommend, I'd probably go with this one because you're given that information. Whether or not they'd accept you just simply quoting that pH plus pOH is 14, I don't know. What I'm saying to you is this place safe and you cannot possibly get any credit taken away from you if you do it that way. So that is the pH of a strong base. What about weak bases like ammonia? 
How would you work out the pH of a weak base? Well, again, like in all of these, we start with an equation. Ammonia plus water gives the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. Now, because it's a weak base, we do not, if that concentration is 0.1, we cannot assume that's 0.1 because as we said with the weak acid, the dissociation is very, very tiny. So this is hardly dissociated at all. What we've got to do then, of course, is a similar approach to what we did with the weak acid. We will need this time a Kb value because it's now an equilibrium constant for a base. They're all Kcs, but we use other letters, A for acid, B for base, W for water. They're all Kc values. The Kb would be the ammonium ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration over the ammonia concentration. You don't need to include the water. The water will be there purely as solvent. It would be in massive quantity compared to the others and any change in it can be ignored. So we're only worried about this one. And just like we did with the acid, we are going to assume that X is the extent of the dissociation. That would produce x there and x there. And in this, we would now end up with x times x, x squared, over 0 0.1 minus x. Just like we did with the weak acid, we now make an assumption. Since the base is weak, the value of x will be very, very small. And 0 0.1 minus x is effectively the same as 0 0.1. So this becomes x squared over 0 0.1, we then obviously need the Kb value to do the maths. We end up with x squared equals 0.1 times Kb. It's got a value almost exactly the same as the one for ethanoic acid. We then square root it. And then finally, we negative log that. Okay. Now remember, this time we will have the hydroxide ion concentration so if you negative log it, you will get the pOH, which you can take away from 14 and get the pH. Or you can follow the same approach as we did for the sodium hydroxide a moment ago. Kw equals H plus times OH minus equals 10 to the minus 14. Substitute the value of X for OH minus and then work out H plus. And then finally negative log that. All right. Now, again, I've shown you how to do these. So the weak base is done exactly the same as the weak acid and the strong base. It's like two calculations in one. You first of all work out the hydroxide ion concentration using the Kb value. Then you change the hydroxide ion concentration into an H plus concentration using Kw. And then finally, you negative log it to get the pH.